Hello, King's Only. In 10. Thank you. Bye. 10. King's College Hospital, London. A major trauma centre. Have you got a blood pressure yet? She was on the floor and I thought she's dead. And one of the busiest A&E departments in the world. Stabbing, code red. King's is everything. Everything pounds in through that door. The fire has been trapped between him and the bridge. A place where love... Can I wait here until she comes home? Can I come home with her? Life. Oh, apart from having a brain injury, never better. What happened? I got bitten. By who? By me mate. <laughs> and loss unfold every single day. I've not got a happy feeling of you. No. Not breathing. Stop. All the patients you're about to see were treated in one department in just one 24-hour period. You're going to be all right. You know what happens when things are bad? Daddy's here. Please don't cry. The moment that you're in recess and you're really sick and all you can think about is, am I going to live, am I going to die? Silly things go out the window. And ultimately, what's important is realised that you're loved and that you're not alone. I'm an MTC consultant. Um, I was hoping to discuss getting a CT scan for a patient, please. It does desaturate when you take the oxygen off um, and has poor air introduced to the chest, but no actual evidence clinically of bruising or subcutaneous emphysema. Hello. I'm Laura, one of the nurses down here. Um, as soon as we can make a space, I'll get you on a trolley, but we're very busy, so just bear with us. OK. If you're walking into work on the night shift, first thing I clock is how many ambulances are queued up outside the department because you can gauge from that just how busy it's going to be. If I'm coming into minors and I'm walking past the green chairs lined with people and I can see every cubicle's full, I know it's going to be a busy few hours. So that's just to remind us to do obs on that lady at some point. Senior staff nurse Laura is in charge of minors tonight. She's one hour into a 12-hour shift. And then there's a 13-weeks pregnant lady with a headache that hasn't had obs. If you just leave it in the yellow tray, that's my um, tray of things to do. I used to get quite wrung out and stressed about how busy it got in the department. Um, but then I took a few months off and went and worked abroad for a while. Um, in India, um, and I think that gave me an awful lot of perspective on just how lucky we are really to even have A&E departments here. There you go. You're quite a tall man, aren't you? Yeah, I'm six foot one. I want that bed as well. They said they was, couldn't put me in there because there was no bed. Tonight there's a bed, I want it. I'm in pain, mate. I can't sit on this chair no more. Hopefully this shouldn't be long before they call us. <laughs> Who? I think they need a mic. They don't shout loud enough. Good, man. Hello. Hello. How are you all up to? Right, the lady said to me that I couldn't have a bed because there was no beds. There's a bed there now. Is it possible some could change it so I could get on it, please? I'm very uncomfortable. Just give me a second. Thank Thank you. Thank you. Stacey, stay calm. I'm watching these standards for the next five minutes. 37-year-old dad and now granddad Stacy has come to King's by ambulance. <laughs> He's here with his girlfriend Tara after experiencing breathing difficulties. Thank God for his tenders, mate, that's all I can say. I'm going to fuck off in a minute, I swear to God. Stop, I swear to God. You're going to get you well. nowhere, trust me. 
don't work like that. Uh, excuse me, hello. Uh, can I have some painkillers, please? I was told I was going to get something stronger than... Yeah, a lot of pain. Uh, shit, 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 shit. Oh, my God. No, 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 it's my back. It's all my lung, not my back. Ooh. Really, I'd prefer to be lying down, if I'm honest with you. Are you wheelchair bound? No, I'm no, not, but not I'm not going to get on that chair because it's uncomfortable. Pain. That's why no, I said... No, keep trying to tell someone he's going to have pain. There's a bed free up there. They said there was no free beds. Yeah, there's no free beds. There is one now. There's one there, cubicle one's got a free bed, and it just needs making up. So, Stacey, tell me what happened. I had a collapsed lung about eight years ago, and it's the same side, and it's the same kind of pain where I'm trying to breathe, can't cough without the pain, can't walk without having to stop because of the pain and stuff, and I just called the ambulance. Whereabouts is the pain? Can you point out? Yeah, it's down here. Down here. Deep breath in and out. Take a deep breath in and out. In and out. Well, you just need an extra to see whether you have another infection. And I think it's appropriate to do some blood tests as well. I don't go to the hospital or doctors or anything like that unless I'm like some seriously wrong because I'm not really a hospital kind of person. I don't think anyone is really, are they? <laughs> well. Oh, oh, sorry. 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 Oh. Trolley's not good. Trolley's not good. This one. No, yeah, I'm gonna go on there. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, shit. That's it. Oh, that's much better. That's much better. Oh, babe, that is so much better, I tell you. That's so much better. I've got one of these personalities, you either like me or you love me. So that's, there's no in between. It's either you like me or you don't. Push this bed over, turn that light off, babe, please. That's it, yeah. The light, yeah. That's it. And I actually called them nurses. I want some food they're supposed to feed me. Excuse me? Yeah. Would you just come to ask me if I want something to eat? Do we have sandwiches. Oh. Nothing hot? Nothing hot, no. OK, what else have you got? Don't um, eat cheese. Right. Don't eat ham. What else do you have? Um, we I think we've got tuna. Egg. It depends what's there at the end of the day. To Can be you have a look and let me know what you've got then? Because rather than. Just choose, because than... I've got lots to do right, and then... I can't keep going back and forth. Right, can I have tuna and coffee, please? Okay, how do you take your coffee? Uh, one sugar. Two. One and a bit sugars. A milk? Yes, yes please. please. Can you just choose? Because she ain't got time. All right? It's so awkward. Yeah, well. Yeah, I thought when she goes up there and she's, I've chose tuna and there's no tuna, she has to come back and tell, oh, we've got no tuna, but we've got this. It's your business. I told you to go and tell me what was there, hasn't it? I think it would interfere with your ability to care for people if you were getting offended by the way they'd spoken to you. But some people don't really appreciate what they've got and um, have no qualms about taking it out on the innocent nurse who's standing in front of them. <laughs> Thank you. That's all right. Tuna what? Spicy tuna what? I don't know, try it mate, sounds like your sort of thing. What the fuck is that? I don't know. Take that out please. What? The leaf, innit? Oh babe, you know I don't like touching this stuff. Just careful, you're taking all the tuna blood. Just the leaf, man. Yeah, it's on the leaf. Yeah, the leaf, oi, come back. I don't have to stay here if you're going to start up with your shit. You're not disabled. Hey. This is far from cool, man. For one, like, where's the hot sexy nurse? Okay? It's like this is the problem, right? You want stuff like ER or you know, Grey's Anatomy, and they make going to hospitals cool and stuff, innit? Yeah. This is not cool, bro. Hello. 
You haven't been forgotten. Don't worry. We will get to you shortly. There's two nurses and about 30 patients. I just want to give you a quick ring back. I'm up the hospital at the moment. Still waiting, basically, to find out what's going on. Do you want a bit of water to wash that down with? What's what, what, what down? Codidromol. I've had some of those. They're not good. They're not rubbish. They are. You have to give them a chance to work. They'd have me as high as a kite. High as a kite? Yeah. I've got a high tolerance. I'm sure you have, because you've had lots of painkillers. Mm. My back. It's fucking rumble. Bro, let me get you some painkillers then. I don't want no painkillers. If it's hurting, it's hurting for a reason. I want to feel it. I'm gonna block that. Bro, that ain't cool. 26 year old Andrew has been knocked off his motorbike by a car. Honestly, I got it. I thought I must have caused a dent in his car. Nothing. nothing. If that was anyone else, they'd be dead. Big for nothing. If that was maybe. anyone else, they'd be dead. I just accepted it. He's come to King's with his friends from the gym, where he works recruiting new members. Yeah, all my lower back's fucked, man. What do you mean? Any normal man would have just disintegrated and died. I just smashed a car, no problem, got this. Man down for about 30 seconds. I was good to go. Woke up face down on the floor, thinking, you're in the middle of the road, get up. I thought, I can't move. Uh, come on, get up, you're in the middle of the road. You must be able to move. Oh, I can't move. And me and my gym guys, we've, we've got this sound. If, if he can do it, I can do it. And I just remember just standing up and the pain was unbelievable. It just took my breath away and I collapsed on the floor. You've got to stop riding that thing, and It's got to be game over. It's got to be. Bro, you say, all right, it takes you two hours to get in and all that, but... What's two hours of the rest of your it? life? Or <laughs> well, you're sitting in that wheelchair for the rest of your life. Bollocks to that. So how many times do people in London come off their bikes every I've day? I've seen some real bad ones, though. Well, that geezer weren't in a good way, was he? The pizza delivery fellow we drove past the other week. He looked in but trouble. he wasn't a spot. He wasn't a spot. Because spark. I think when I hit a car, I, I shifted. <laughs> <laughs> we call our group, you know, we're, we're the Spartans. You don't give up. You never surrender, ever. And that's, that's kind of, you know, the model we use in the gym, how we actually portray our life in general. You know, you never give up, um, regardless of the situation. If there's a million against you, well, it's not enough. So, uh, yeah, that's what it means to us. Excuse me. Hello. Is it Mr Coombe? I'm Laura. I just want to check your blood pressure and stuff, and then I'll get you some painkillers if you need them. Oh. How are you feeling pain-wise? Pain. You have pain? Yeah. OK, whereabouts is it? Um, lower back. That goes under your tongue, so no chatting just for a minute. On a Monday, we'll do chest and tricep, Tuesday, back and bicep, legs. On a Wednesday, Thursday, we'll do arms, which is bicep, tricep, forearms, and do calves again. And then on a Friday, we'll do shoulders and abs. Must be legs tomorrow, they must have Wednesday. Oh, no, we'll dodge your legs. What did you do, shoulders tonight? Did a bit of shoulders today. You'd have thought we're, we're training for our lives um, or a real purpose, but there is no real purpose for what we're going other than just self-discipline. So it's a bit bizarre. <laughs> Paracetamol and ibuprofen to start with. Oh, they don't, if they don't help, we can get you stronger stuff. I really don't want to take no painkillers. Why? I hate taking painkillers. And when you have a pain, there's a reason for the pain. You're just blocking it, and then you think, all right. Yeah, but I'd rather, just, I'd rather just know I'm in pain because I'm fucked. I'm constantly be in pain. No. I put that on ages ago, you know. What is it? The alarm. So you call or what? No, don't. What? I'm calling you. Where are you? I think the thing that makes a bad shift is when you can't, you can't go the extra mile that everybody wants to be able to do with every patient. You want to be able to go and spend five minutes with the elderly person who lives on their own, but you can't because you have to go and attend to the drunk that's weeing in the corner and you have to move them back to the cubicle trying not to get weed on yourself. Doctors are trying to find the cause of the pain in Stacey's lungs. What do you want me to tell? I want some um, pain. 
You go and ask her. You no, know, tell, not ask. No, I'll ask her, Stacey. Hi, oh, sorry, he's asking for the, his medicine. I've been waiting half an hour already. I know he's in pain, but there's one of me. I'll get there as soon as I can. People aren't just the person you're seeing on that day. There's always a lot more going on with people and you can't take things at surface value, which is why you can't take it personally when they're shouting and upset because nine times out of ten, it's because something else has happened to them, not because of what's going on in A&E. Right. Now, I've had a look at your X-ray uh -huh. as well. It does not show any acute, I mean, any, any new change. To Probably. What? probably. It doesn't say it's a acute infection or something. Right. Right. So I believe it's it's a part of your previous problem right. going on, okay. and that's why you're having the pain. But I'm I'm going to keep you here. Um, I've discussed with the medical team. They're happy to review you. Uh -huh. All right. They will have a look at your bloods when they're back. Yeah, so admitting me. Yeah. Stacy's a very charming person. Stacy could charm the birds out the trees. Are you scared of uh, blood as well? Yeah. Or just the needle? No, I don't no. like the needle. It's just the needle. Don't look at the needle. I'll let you know when I go in, right? He gets very upset and very agitated in hospital. He does not like hospitals. I think he thinks every time he goes in hospital, he's going to die. He's not going to come out of it. <laughs> but Stacey is a baby. He was a very sickly baby, so he couldn't really go out and play with all the other kids. He used to stand at the window and watch the other kids playing. And he used to cry and say, why can't he play? And over the years, he has, he's had a lot of trouble with his breathing and his heart. Do you still love Daddy, do you? Yeah? OK, Dad. Well, you're not going to ask why I'm in hospital? You're not going to ask me why I'm in hospital? Oh, something wrong with Daddy's lungs. I've got to go. Oh, gosh, I don't know. Because remember I was in hospital, I don't know, you won't remember, but I was in hospital a while ago when you was just a baby with a bad lung. We might as well have lived in the hospital when Stacey was young. Because you wasn't allowed to stay with your children in them days, he had to be in on his own. And I can always remember when we used to leave him, he used to be holding onto the bars and crying, you know? And I think, as young as he was then, I think he does remember that. You're not going to come see me? Huh? <laughs> Whoa, I don't know. I'll get Mummy to find me tomorrow and see how I am. And if I'm still here, you can come down, innit? Yeah? All right, then. I love you, and I'll see you soon. Bye. quite busy because I went in there looking for something. It, it's impossible to predict really just how the night's going to go. Sometimes they will calm down and we'll have and we'll have a spell sort of in the early hours of the morning where it's all a bit calmer. Um, but then it can all go wrong. So. Hello. What's happened to you? Oh, I had a motorbike crash. Motorbike crash. <laughs> Literally just all around here. Just around that, and is that where you think you landed, yeah? Yeah, that's where it impacted. Okay, I'm gonna start at the top. Yeah. All right. It may seem a bit bizarre way away from it. Any pain at all up here? No. Just tell me if you get any pain as I run my fingers down. Yeah. It's all down here. Yeah. yeah. There. Yeah. I'm probably what you've just done. You've got a lot of powerful muscles that attach down to you from your spine. You control a lot of the movement in the hips and everything as well. 
And when you're a big guy like you, if you tear those muscles, it's going to bloody hurt. I think what we simply need to do is just provide you with some painkillers. Okay. Okay, and get you moving. Okay, hold tight there, and I'll yeah, just get no some worries. of those for you, okay? My physical build now, that kind of happened when I was 18, 19. And I hung around with a very influential group of guys, a lot older than me, a lot tougher than me. This girl that I was head over heels in love with ended up going out with my best friend. Um, and they were a real rough bunch of guys. And I just remember one day she broke up with me. They all turned up at my door. There was about eight or nine of them. And I've never felt so scared and intimidated in my whole life. I remember walking outside, seeing them all, thinking, oh my God. And a couple of them had, you know, knives or whatever. And I thought, this is it. Um, Luckily, I just turned around and called the police and, you know, they scared, but I think as scared as I felt then, um, I never wanted to be in a situation like that again. So the next day, I went down to the gym, joined up, and it was kind of just, you know, one day I'll show them, you know, I never wanted to feel like that again. Yeah, that kind of set me off to, uh, in the gym, I suppose. Um, well, don't take any extra paracetamol. Oh, no, I do try and avoid it. Okay. Bank, so cool. But as you say, really the secret is just keep moving. Back to the gym. <laughs> Easy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's fine. Any guy you see in the gym pounding the treadmill, hitting the weights hard, headphones in, sweating, there's a reason he's dead. Oh, done. Oh, good. A lot of people, why do you go to the gym? Oh, I want to lose a bit of weight. What's the real reason? Oh, you know, I just want to feel a bit healthier. There's always a deeper reason. I thought if I put as much focus into a career as I do in the gym, I would be very successful. <laughs> but um, that's yet to be established. I'm still at the gym. <laughs> <laughs> Stacy needs more tests to check for infection. He's been kept in overnight. You're a poor, yeah? Yes, sir. You're going to take care of me, yeah? Yeah, I'm going to do my best as much as I can do. Yeah. You're not going to crush me into no walls or nothing? Mm, yeah, I got one around the corner there. <laughs> <laughs> I got one special one around the corner there. When a person's in the hospital, believe it or not, they're very scared. They mightn't seem like it but they are very nervous. What are you in here for, anyway? Um, pleurisy on the lung. Oh, no. So that's what but you're going to get scared for. Really bloody painful, mate, I tell you. I'll sit there and I'll talk to them. I'll run a little jokes with them, you know, get them smiling a little bit, trying to take their mind off of the, the whole trauma situation, what's going on around them. It feels like my whole back. I can't walk two steps without like, having to stop and, like, take time to breathe and stuff. It's really well, let's bad. hope it's not too serious. That mm. sounds pretty serious. When I'm on the scene, it's, I always change their attitude a little bit. Well, hopefully they can fix it without having to surgery, yeah? Yeah, I don't think it'll go that far. Oh, boy. You want one? Sure. Hello, it's Laura here. I don't know if Melinda will have told you about a man called Stacey Crossley. Um, Crossley, but it's a man who would love to send up to you if you've got a bed, please. Cool. Um, if you could just save the bed, that would be wonderful. Hunting for me. You're welcome, Dad. Firaz is the trauma lead on call tonight. He is 20 hours into a 25 hour shift. It's still hit and miss. I've done 25 hour shifts where I've literally had not a single trauma patient. And I've done a 25 hour shift where, you know, I've had up to 10. His last patient left the department three hours ago. I've got an on call room with a bed. And you would expect to get bleeped in the middle of the night. If I just assume that I'm not going to get much, that I might get two or three hours, then anything better, more than that is a bonus. 
I'm gonna give it a go, see what happens. <laughs> So can you put this on your mouth like that? Henry has been suffering from hiccups for the last three days. It should be sealed from your mouth while we are, we are waiting for the doctor, yeah? Put it now, you need to breathe in there. <laughs> How long have you been like that? Sunday. Since Sunday? On, on and off. Is it the first time you had that? <gasps> this hiccups? Yeah. Like this, yeah. First time. <gasps> I've got a cold as well. Oh. And my chest feels tight. Tight. <gasps> Why did I come to the hospital on Sunday? I've got either I've got an I've got a training course this week. I started Monday. I've got the exam Wednesday. Oh. <gasps> I can't afford not to go. I've paid five hundred and fifty pounds for the course. No refunds. What course is that then? 17th edition elect wi wiring regulations. Are you an electrician? <laughs> yeah. Um, but, oh. So I would have come in Sunday, but I thought I'll let me just battle on. But now I can't sleep, so. Mm. Hence why you see me. Oh, gosh. You know, it's been all evening, I'm just exhausted. Mm. Would it be alright to use the toilet? The toilet. Toilet, yes, sir. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Hang on, I might have stopped. I don't think they've stopped. I think it's stopped. It stopped. It stopped. Yeah. Wow. Okay. You can stay there for a while. Okay. Yeah, it stopped. Let's see for now. If I get a couple of hours, that'd be nice at least. Oh. No, this is great. They stopped. I can get some rest. I remember holding that bleep for the first time and although it if you're, even if you're not being called for three, four hours, you're just lying there staring at it thinking, is it working, are the batteries dead? Did I miss a bleep, did I fall asleep and I just didn't hear it? Bleeps by my side, I sort of get jolted up. It's almost like a baby crying in the middle of the night. You are up, you're awake straight away. You've got to deal with it. So I can't go and put my pyjamas and fluffy slippers on. I've got to be good to go. I'll take my shoes off. <laughs> but yeah, I'm in my scrubs. So yeah, I might look a little bit dishevelled when I come downstairs at two in the morning. Charge nurse King's College Hospital. Okay, do you know what it was assaulted with? Half of all assault patients are brought in at the weekend. 
An assault could be a tiny graze or nothing wrong, or an assault could be someone that's been beaten up, kicked, stamped upon and stabbed. A 20-year-old student has been punched and kicked in the head outside a Mayfair nightclub. This is Sam, he's 20 years of age. About half past two this morning was assaulted. Can't remember much about it, uh, but does remember being punched uh, and kicked to the face uh, and to the torso uh, and the head. Uh, got back home, been complaining of a headache, mainly left-sided. Uh, obvious deformity to the nose and some pain to the left side of the jaw. Thanks so much. Have you had any alcohol at all this evening? Yeah. How much have you had, do you think? Oh, sure. Lots. Not a lot of time, man. Do some more. OK. Any drugs at all? No. Things that come in at 2 and 3 in the morning, if, particularly assaults, you almost take it for granted that there's alcohol on board. You, you just do, and then until proven otherwise, really. Do you have any funny feelings in your arms or legs at the moment? Just feel really weak. What, whereabouts? Just all over? My arms, my legs. OK. Yeah. What we'll do is we'll get you off this Metal thing in a sec. No way. We get loads and loads of assaults. Sometimes you feel that all you're getting is assaults. Um, there are a lot of nasty people out there. Lift this leg up for me, high as you can. Lift it up, 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 up. And back down this one, up, 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 up. We went to an exclusive club where you have to be on the guest list. Sam got in an argument. He didn't like that there was people making gestures behind my back. Sam and the two guys got thrown out. And then it happened. The thing that I need to do is keep your head nice and still. No nodding or shaking of your head. Just very clear yeses or noes. Yeah. Okay. Good. So I found him with blood everywhere. He was kind of passing in and out like a conscious kind of thing. We'll do some x-rays of your neck. Once we've done the x-rays of your neck, we're going to do a scan of your head to make sure there's no internal injury at all. Okay. He's amnesic with loss of consciousness and a persistent headache. Clinically, he's got a, um, a facial, um, facial fractures. Um, so basically just wanting a head CT on him. I'm going to get, some, I'm going to get a plain cervical spine series. Are you feel OK now? I do, No yeah. hiccups? Stop? No, this is not. Oh, it's good. I'm so glad. Good, I got yeah. me up at Cracker Dawn, so yeah, OK, then at helpful. least you're better. Yeah, thank you so much. You can sleep now and good luck for your son. Thank you, sir. Yeah. All the best, yeah? Yeah, and you? <laughs> he stopped already. Oh, is it? Yeah. Yes. Oh, I'm fighting to stay awake now. I thought I'm going to have to get some coffee down me. Yeah, Red Bull. Yeah? Yeah, Red Bull. I might do that shot, shoot down on me lunch, on me break. Well, it died off a lot, hasn't it? Yeah, I feel the cold's keeping everyone at home, isn't it? if you want to hunt. When they said they were going to take Sam to King's, he wanted to go somewhere else uh, due to the fact that his dad passed away in King's Hospital. But I remember when they told him, he squeezed my hand. He just didn't want to remember what happened there. And I'd never seen him look so, like, scared, I guess, and it wasn't very nice. The 
day that Sam's dad passed away, we were all at school. And I remember he he came in and played rugby for his dad and they all had black bands around them. And it was really nice to see people actually do have respect for people, it was nice. To see if you just said, could it, could everybody who doesn't have anything wrong with them just leave or something? I don't know. Yeah. Maybe there'd be some clever phrase you could do, and, and it might actually, it might actually work. They did it with the seven seven bombing. Maybe like there's a big what did they say? They went out into, they went out into the waiting room and said bombs have gone off across multiple locations in London. We're expecting hundreds of casualties. If you can walk to your GP, you need to leave now. And everyone got up and left. Really? Apart from. One man who was actually having a heart attack, so they let him stay. <laughs> I think all night workers have their own little routine for um, working nights. Quite often we'll go out for breakfast after work, um, watch all the people going into work and we'll eat, and then we'll all go home to bed, which is a nice thing to do at the end of a shift. We'll leave it a few minutes and then I'll recheck your oxygen levels, OK? OK, lovely. OK. Maria? Maria? What are you sending it for? Um... Maria? Maria, it's time to adios. <laughs> you can hear me coming, yeah? What, did they just start all of a sudden? It's in a second. Well, let's give you something else. We'll do a little blood test now, OK? Uh, chest so go sit down. Yeah, go lie down there then and I'll just... <laughs> well, when Henry came in, I thought, all right, my dad, obviously, comes. I know all the medical drugs, I know all of that, so let's just give him the works. <sighs> Is he back? Where's his... Um... Wait, let me give you that. That's a little thing to read about hiccups, OK? And this is some of the treatment we're going to try now. And then we'll get a little test then. You know, some people just get hiccups after they overeat or they have fizzy drinks or, you know, something along those, something quite trivial. But there are other reasons it can be, you know, central nervous system problems, neurological causes. And then obviously in the emergency medicine, we have to think about sinister things, you know, the worst case scenario. You, you're still here? Uh, I thought you I left. <laughs> and it started again. You started again? Yeah. yeah. The guy in bed one, I've written up some medications. <laughs> Omeprazole and haloperidol. Or we can have it orally, but the haloperidol, you can have IV or IM. Um, but he's going to need a blood test this time now. I'll put you a needle. Take blood from here. We'll send it for investigations. I'm in an accident, emergency, but, well, it, it depends how long they keep me. I don't know how long they're going to keep me. I've got a f f No, 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 don't, don't rush yet, cos it's fr... I can't talk. It's freezing and all that, darling. I, you know, you can come a bit later when all the buses start and just before... in case I can't... In, in case I can't get to the car. Gosh, I can't even talk. So sad. 20 year old Sam is waiting for the results of his x ray and CT scan. Is my nose, I just want to know, is my nose really broken? Is it? You probably do have a break to your nose, yeah. Will it look really bad in the morning? It looks fine, babes. There's some swelling around there. Usually that settles down in about five to seven days, and then we can sort of decide okay. how bad it is after that. Those x-rays are fine, so we'll take this off. 
Just keep your head nice and still until I tell you to move it. Okay. okay. Just turn your head and face that wall over there. Does that feel all right? Stiff. And towards me. OK. Let's sit you up. Good. You look very different sitting up the way. <laughs> your scan looks all right as well. So there's no internal bleeding. You've got no fractures. Your neck's cool. You're going to be very stiff and sore in the morning. Yeah. That's the bad really news. Ready. OK. Oh, I've seen face with Dr. The nose. Very swollen. Yeah. I'm looking ugly. I don't want to be ugly. I have a lovely black eye tomorrow. I just don't want to be ugly. You're not going to take all of these off? Get them off me. <laughs> Ooh. Two. Mm, chunky ones. Oh, Christ. Sorry. Right. Really He's such a circular. baby. Oh. Patches left over, some in your fake town. I don't think I'm vain. I've been told I'm vain, but I wouldn't say I'm vain. I know worse people than me. Put it that way. <laughs> oh, nice one. I've got holes in my bloody legs. I'll oh, have a laugh. That's not going to be too bad, actually. Go and get them off. Oh, Christ, Mel. You've missed half of it. Yeah, that's oh. my fault. Beautiful arms. I did have a beautiful face until my nose broke. Really ugly nose. Can we get back into play? Uh, it's really bad. It's not really bad. Did you notice? Could be well. Really embarrassed. Is he allowed any of this coke? If he wants it. It's not good for your full fat coke, but you can. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so thirsty. You can use your own arm as well, you know. He's loving this. He's <laughs> 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 oh, You're probably going to milk this for a while. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe preparing for a big night out. I mean, I'd try and have a sunbed if I could. Just have a nice little glow. Does my nose look really bad? It's just it's a bit wonky, but... It wouldn't be that bad, would it? If you, you wouldn't notice this if... If it wasn't for all the blood, you probably wouldn't see it straight away. That's really good. Straighten my hair a little bit. Bit gel on the hair. Off shave. <laughs> the usual stuff, really. Nothing, nothing over the top. Make sure you drink plenty when you get home tonight, cos you are going to feel rotten tomorrow. Just... Stretch, loosen up your shoulders as well. Sort of move your neck from side to side so it doesn't stiffen up. Take a 20-year-old 15 years ago when I was in my 20s, and you take, you know, a 20-year-old from 1972, I think they care about the same things. They care about how they look, they care about how much money they've got, they care about girls and partying. And th that's it. That, that's been happening for decades, and that's not going to change. Yeah, Get I feel really stiff. Get your girlfriend to give you a massage. <laughs> <laughs> Should be giving me more of a massage than that. Thank you. Um, yeah, enough of that. Put <laughs> <laughs> huh? your shoes on. I didn't hear you. <laughs> Say what? Nothing. <laughs> it stopped. Huh? They've stopped again. Henry's blood tests are clear. What can I do, though? Why? Well, I've, got bloody, I've got an exam. Have you? I've been up all night now. What exam have you got? 17th edition. Electric, so what? 17th edition wiring regulations for electricians. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. I, mean, I don't know if it's all that as well stressing me out. But I can't give you a definitive answer, to be honest with you. It's like my dad's suffering with hiccups for the last two, three years. I haven't found a diagnosis. Seriously? Yeah, but that's the worst case scenario. But yours isn't that case because it's just a one off right now. All right. Cool. Doc, but have yeah. a brilliant day. No, well, I hope you have a better day, to be honest with you. I'm going to be sleeping. He looked after me really well. Right, I need to go to bed. Thank you. And I'll see you tonight.
remember what it what it looked like before. But <laughs> I think it looks better. I've been said it I've been told it looks better. The wonderful thing about the emergency room and the wonderful thing about King's College Hospital is that it's not what we believe in or don't believe in. It's actually our quality of life as individuals that matters. Working in A&E does change how you think and how you feel. It just gives you a better perspective on life. You know, like everything can always be worse. It makes you realise just how fragile life can be, actually, that just in a, in a moment, things can, can change very rapidly. So, two each day as it comes and, and um, yeah, live life to the full. Working in A&E, you realise that the most important thing in life is, is you and the people that you love, and just to hold them dear, just tell them, you know, how you feel. Why else would you go into medicine if you didn't want to try and improve someone's life in some way, no matter how small? That's, that's why we do it.